Hi, the Brad Lloyd, and today I'm trying out the new Nano Leaf Essentials A19 light bulb with thread support. This is going to be my first ever thread accessory, and I can't wait to finally try it out. These have been almost impossible to find, so when I finally found some, I made sure to get a few of them. And if you've watched this channel before, you know I'm a huge fan of Philips Hue. So in this video, I'm going to compare these against my Philips Hue light bulbs to see if they're just as good. Why are these light bulbs so hard to find in stock? What's so special about them? Well, for me, it comes down to three things. Well, first is price. I got these light bulbs for only $26.95 on the Apple online store here in Canada. The Philips Hue, for example, costs $59.99. That means I can buy two of these nano leaf bulbs for less than the cost of one Philips Hue bulb. Next is design. These light bulbs look awesome. I love that Nano Leaf went with a creative design that really suits their brand. This 120 sided shape is known as a Rombi Cozy Cozy Rombi Cozy Dodi Dehedron Rombi Cozy Cozy Dehedron Rombi Cozy Cozy Rombi Cozy Dodi Dehedron Rombi Cozy Dodi Rombi Cozy Dehe Dodi Dehedron Rombi Cozy Dodi Cohedron This 120 sided shape is known as a Rombi Cozy Dodi Cohedron I've been practicing that one for days. Next is thread. There's been so much hype about thread since the HomePod mini was released last fall, but there still aren't very many accessories that support this technology. For many of you, you've heard all about thread, but if it's something that's new for you, then here is what it is in a nutshell. Low energy, not so important here with a light bulb, but this is gonna be very helpful for those battery operated accessories. Faster response time and better range than Bluetooth and often even Wi-Fi. Thread is known to be self-healing. All of your thread accessories connect together into one large mesh network. The more thread accessories you have, the stronger that network is going to be. And if one of those thread accessories isn't responding, your accessory will automatically find an alternate path to connect to. To take advantage of thread, you're going to need a HomePod mini, which is going to act as a border router and connect all of your thread accessories together. If you don't have a HomePod mini, don't worry. These light bulbs will still connect by Bluetooth. It'll just be a little bit slower and a little bit less reliable. Honestly, the HomePod mini is awesome and it's very reasonably priced, so I highly recommend it. I did a video comparing the regular size HomePod, also awesome, to the HomePod mini. So subscribe to my channel and I'll put a link to that specific video in the description below so you can check it out. Either way, this is gonna to connect to whatever you have. If you don't have a HomePod mini, it's gonna to connect to Bluetooth. If you get a HomePod mini down the road, it's gonna to connect to Thread. It all happens automatically, so there's no adjusting settings, nothing to change, it couldn't be easier. So you can see the specs are very similar between these two products. But let's do a side-by-side -side comparison so we can test the brightness, the color intensity, and the responsiveness between these two bulbs. All right, so let's get these lights into a light fixture to see what it looks like and to see how easy or hard setup is. Nice packaging, it kind of looks like lava to me. We've got, looks like a little HomeKit code there, so I might need that. And just a little booklet and best of all, the entree. So this really is an awesome looking light bulb. Rombi Cozy Dodi Cahedron. I like too, it looks like there's a HomeKit code right on the light bulb itself. So I guess screw it in and go from there. Well, it lights up. So now that I've got these light bulbs into the fixture, let's see if we can set them up on the home app. So I've got the three cards that came with each of the light bulbs. So let's just do it one at a time. Okay, open in home app. Yes, let's do it. Add light. It is gonna be the Lloyd home. Connecting to lights. So where do I want to put that? Well, this is going to be in our great room. Great room, continue. And I'm going to call this floor lamp. Okay. 
And we're gonna skip the automations for now. We can do that later. I don't even know which light it is that I just set up. So let's just try changing it purple. Or maybe that's closer to blue. There we go. Okay, that looks nice. And if I want, I can dim that. That was really, really easy. So let's set up the second one the same way. The next thing I recommend doing here is going into the NanoLeaf app. You can download it from the App Store if you don't have it already, and you can see it's laid out very nicely. You can see all of your rooms and your accessories within the home app. What you really wanna do here is make sure you have the most updated firmware available. There's a couple of different ways to do this. A simple way is just by clicking on one of your NanoLeaf accessories. And then from here, you can click on the Scenes tab, and then you can see Upgrade Now. When you do that, it'll actually take you to the firmware update page so you can update each of your NanoLeaf products. You can also do this directly from the Settings app, so whatever's easier for you, but it's good to make sure that you've always got the latest firmware update. Okay, this looks pretty awesome, but I wanna see how it looks right beside my Philips Hue lights. Let's go test it out so we can compare the brightness, the color intensity, and the responsiveness of these lights. Okay, I've got NanoLeaf on the left and Philips Hue on the right. Turn on my den lights. Turn off my den lights. Turn on my den lights. So one thing I noticed right away is the Nano Leaf Bulb retains the last light color that it had where the Philips Hue defaults to around a 2700 Kelvin light temperature. I also noticed that the Philips Hue, you can see dims as it turns off where the Nano Leaf is more of a just on and off. Turn my den lights green. Okay, those both look pretty green. It's hard to tell which one is greener. They both look really good. Turn my den lights red. Wow. I don't know. Both of those look really, really cool. I almost think the Nano Leaf has a bit of a darker red than the Philips Hue. That's super hard to tell. Those both look pretty awesome. Turn my den lights purple. Okay, very nice. The, the Philips Hue seems to have a bit of a brighter purple on this one. This is where I'm noticing the Nano Leaf isn't quite as bright. Turn my den lights yellow. Seriously? Turn my den lights yellow. That is pretty sad uh, for both of them. They both look super green to me. Turn my den lights green. Okay, <laughs> I guess I can see a bit of a difference. Turn my den lights white. Whoa, okay, that is bright. I would say the Nano Leaf actually looks slightly brighter than the Philips Hue. Both are pretty impressive here. Dim my den lights to 50%. Okay, so at 50%, they both look fairly consistent. I would say here the Nano Leaf looks a little bit brighter than the Philips Hue. Turn my den lights to 1%. So that's really good. You may have noticed LED lights sometimes have difficulty dimming at very low levels, but 1% and that looks pretty light. Definitely still on, but pretty light. Turn my den lights to 100%. Turn my den lights turquoise. Oh, that's nice. Okay, the last thing I want to test is how well do these nano leaf lights work when there's no thread support. So what I've done is unplugged all of my HomePod minis throughout the house. So it's essentially working off of Bluetooth. So does that make a difference? I'm interested to find out. Turn my den lights red. <laughs> wow, okay, huge difference. Did you guys see that? That was crazy. Turn my den lights blue. In this case, the nano leaf bulb does not even seem to be responding. Turn my den lights blue. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Turn my den lights white.
And obviously you can see the delay there and it looked like it actually turned red before it turned white, which was very unusual. Turn my den lights to 1% brightness. Wow, this is painful, painful. The Nano Leaf doesn't even respond here. I have an error, sorry, I didn't hear back from your devices. So that's not good. Let's try it again. Dim my den lights to 1%. Still just not connecting at all. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, there we go. Turn my den lights red. Wow, okay, how long was that? <laughs> that was crazy. So you can really see how important thread is here as compared to Bluetooth. The Philips Hue is fast, it responds well. It uses Zigbee, which means it requires a bridge. The great thing with the Nano Leaf using thread is you don't need a bridge, you just need the HomePod Mini. So if you don't already have a Philips Hue bridge, then just another reason why Nano Leaf might be the best option for you. Okay, so what did you guys think? Who liked the Philips Hue better and who thought the Nano Leaf lights were better? Let me know what your favorite is in the comments below. So I've been using the Nano Leaf Essentials for a few days now and I've been very impressed. They're very fast, the color intensity is great, and they dim really, really nicely. The biggest question to me is why would anyone spend twice as much on a Philips Hue light? And that's a completely fair question. To me, I'm still buying a Philips Hue light anywhere where there's a wall switch because I hate it when people turn light switches off and then my lights don't work. So with Philips Hue, you still have the option to pair it with a Lutron Aurora that will actually keep that light switch in an on position. You can't do that with the Nano Leaf Essentials light, but it works great in a lamp or anywhere where there's no light switch. I hope you liked this video and you found it helpful. And I wanna say thank you so much to all of my subscribers. I really appreciate your support. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing so you can see more of my videos where I go over Apple HomeKit products. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.